So quite a few of you are going on holidays over the summer, and as you may know, I myself am no stranger to travel, especially by air myself. Um, but as you are going on holidays, the uh, member states of the European Union have a different idea as to how much your holiday should cost, especially if it's on low-cost airlines. Um, you, might have, you might remember me uh, talking about a tax on air travel, which is currently suggested by the Netherlands in the European Council, which would increase your individual ticket by 7 euros. Uh, this would be a departure tax, meaning that every time you leave from a airport located within the European Union, you would pay 7 euros on your ticket. That would mean your return ticket would be 14 euros more expensive. Uh, if you have a connection in between and you have a return, your return connection would be 28 euros more expensive. Now, the Netherlands has been, uh, has been endorsing this tax uh, quite uh, intensely and it has been getting support from France, Belgium, uh, Luxembourg, Finland have all endorsed this tax. Now, a certain amount of countries, including uh, the island, countries of Cyprus and Malta, are more skeptical, and rightfully so, because it would harm tourism. Um, we also know that the Dutch proposal is in the light of environmentalism by saying that people are flying too much, and therefore we need to curb air travel. Um, but the Dutch Secretary of, uh, of State for, for Finance has also indicated that it would raise 200 um, 200 uh, million euros a year in uh, tax revenue. Now, um, the uh, tax proposal in the European Council would be subject to the rule of unanimity, meaning that if one country says no, it would be no and it would therefore, therefore be vetoed. The Netherlands has then proposed that we might tax kerosene and we could say that we would put a tax and the suggestion um, uh, would be of 330 euros um, for 1,000 liters of, of kerosene, um, which would amount to about the same uh, um, uh, increase in taxation. However, kerosene um, is generally not taxed uh, as other uh, type of petrol may be, type of oil may be, um, and therefore you would have to um, opt out of the exemption, which would mean that you would have to do it bilaterally or multilaterally as countries. So certain countries could say that they don't want to do it and then you would be at a competitive disadvantage if uh, your member state has done it but others haven't. The third option is a strengthened ETS, so that's emissions, emissions trading system. Um, uh, and so what happens right now is that uh, uh, certain actors have to buy emissions uh, or the, the, the right to pollute, essentially, uh, from the government. And um, as it is now, airlines have to purchase uh, uh, only 15% of the total amount of emissions that they emit. If you would put that on 100%, uh, you'd have a considerable increase. The price of a ton of CO2 at the moment is at 26 euros. However, that could also be subject to change. The, the World Bank has suggested an amount of between 40 and $50. The climate change activists you see in the street right now, the Germans have put out a position paper in which they asked that the price of a ton of CO2 would be 180 euros. Now, if you would account for that, so if you would make airlines pay for 100% of the ETS and you would increase the amount to 180 euros, uh, the, 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 the price increase uh, could be 20-fold. Uh, and so this to me, uh, and, and I've mentioned this before in articles and also in videos, I think it's socially unjust because it, uh, it is a regressive tax. It, um, it affects people with lower incomes considerably more than others. Um, for flights on, uh, with low-cost airlines, uh, you could look at a price increase of 20%. So it would harm those people. And those people who are flying on business or who fly for the government and for which it is paid for anyway, they don't particularly care. So it's feel-good policies for high-income classes at the expense of low-income classes. And there are real solutions. So it's not that there is no solutions to the environmental challenges. So if you are concerned about emissions and pollution, uh, you can look at the innovation that is happening right now. I'll be putting a link down. Uh, the new Airbus uh, uh, model, which has 30% uh, uh, more fuel efficiency per per passenger seat. So all of this, uh, uh, all of this is happening, and this is because there is demand. Um, because people are flying a lot, 
uh, there is money, there is profits to be invested into R&D because the airlines don't have an incentive to give free money to the petroleum industry. Um, they want to use as little kerosene as possible as well. And so the producers of, of, um, uh, of planes have every incentive to, to create models that use less fuel. But that can only happen if there's continuous use as well. So if you artificially reduce that market demand by overtaxing it, uh, you might actually see less innovation happening in that area. Um, you know that uh, working with the Consumer Choice Center, we have uh, created the Hands Off My Cheap Flight movement. Uh, I'll be putting links down below for that as well. If you think that uh, this is something that you'd like to support, and I hope you do, you can donate the, uh, the amount of seven euros, which is the exact amount of the tax, in order for us to work against uh, this tax. Uh, with the fight is far from over. It still hasn't been addressed in mainstream news. It's more very specific news that are talking about this. Uh, so spread the word about, about this tax and that it is being discussed and it might happen and will affect all of your travel prices in the future. And, uh, and hopefully uh, you will help us with uh, a donation. So thanks a lot for, for watching and uh, I'll hope to see you soon.